Dan, good to see you today. Uh, so how do you think, uh, tell us about the warning from North Korea uh, telling international embassies to evacuate their staff. I mean, it sounds pretty dire. What do you make of it? Well, the, the intention behind this is, 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 has been clear from the start, from the start of this crisis. Uh, North Korea's um, whole, whole intention is to show its willingness, preparedness uh, to defend itself uh, should, war, should war be launched upon it. Um, of course, the, every year we have these massive provocations of joint U.S. and South Korean uh, war games exercises right on the borders of North Korea. This year the provocations were stepped up um, to actually uh, simulate a, a nuclear missile attack on North Korea. Um, B-2 bombers were used for the first time along with B-52s and F-22 bombers. So this mili massive military provocation uh, from the U.S. The North Korea feels rightly threatened. It's seen what's happened to Iraq, to uh, to Libya, and so on. It feels threatened. It's, it knows it was on the the overt, explicit hit list of um, uh, of the uh, of the American government uh, some years ago, and it needs to make very clear that it will not tolerate any kind of infringement of its sovereignty, any attack. Um, and that this is what all of this is about, is to show that it's willing to defend itself. Well, it's certainly, it's certainly making steps that, that some might assume to do so. Uh, Dan, just a moment here. We've been getting reports in the past few minutes of a, of a quite a large, a six-plus magnitude earthquake near North Korea. Of course, it was just a couple of months ago that the North did a, one of, another one of its underground nuclear bomb tests. Uh, can you read anything into that, or is it just pure speculation? Well, I think we should wait, wait and see, see, see what happens. But of course, constantly, you know, uh, North Korea has this policy called the Army First policy, um, where it's constantly trying to um, develop its nuclear um, and, and its military resources uh, to defend itself. I mean, again, like the, the lessons of, of, of Libya and Iraq were very clear. Saddam Hussein gave up his, uh, his weapons program, and we saw what happened. Uh, to Iraq as a result. Colonel Gaddafi gave up his weapons program and we saw what, see what happened to Libya as a result. So they're constantly trying to update, upgrade um, their, their, their weapons in order to defend themselves. Um, of course, the, 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 the US, one of the reasons for this constant um, annual provocation of these war games exercises is to keep tensions on the peninsula high to justify the massive US military presence. It's one of the most militarized regions in the entire planet. Um, and so, so this is one of the reasons they, they, they're always doing these uh, provocations to justify but, but Dan, Dan, if I can jump in just for a moment here. I'm sorry, I'm just so low on time here. But uh, he, here we have this bolstering of military forces, uh, Pyongyang doing it, America uh, rushing into the region, though. I mean, do you think, is there anything Washington can do to prevent a full-scale confrontation in case North Korea really is determined to take it to the extreme? Because is any, anybody's guess at the moment. Yeah, of course they can stop. They can stop launching these all-out provocations. They can stop simulating nuclear strikes um, against North Korea on the border of North Korea. Very easy. What they can do. The thing is, they would love to occupy um, North Korea. They would love to have troops right up on the border of China. And the, the, what stops them is every time they simulate these these attacks, these invasions, they calculate that their losses would be in the magnitude of tens and tens of thousands of soldiers. So that's what's stopping them. What they would dearly love then, the U.S. and its allies. Uh, would be for actually South Korea, for, for, for an Kore inter-Korean war in which South Korea took all the conflict, uh, took all the casualties. Now, so this, for this reason, this is why the North is so determined to make clear that any attempt to provoke some kind of inter-Korean conflict on the part of the U.S. and its allies will, the U.S. would pay a heavy price for that. Indeed. So, I, mean, that, that's, I mean, that's certainly the message we are getting out of Pyongyang at the moment. Uh, Dan Glazebrook, a political writer and journalist, uh, joining us live here on RT. A great pleasure to see you today. Likewise, thank you.